Hi you and welcome to this game review of Star Trek 2013. In my reviews I usually have the little quirk that I have fully beaten the game before I do these because I want to be able to talk about well basically everything and reach a conclusion that can be based on the entire or most of the gaming experience on hand. So this time it is for the Star Trek game basically called Star Trek from 2013 and I have now for the first time played through it in 2024 using the Steam version of the game. So quite a few years after. So what can I say about the game now? I think first we might do a, a general presentation of the game. So this game was, as I just mentioned, released in 2013 and it was meant to slot into the Kelvin Universe timeline. So the rebooted new air quotes uh, timeline featuring Zachary Quinto and uh, Chris Pine as the lead actors and characters of Kirk and Spock. And yes, this game is slotted in between the first Star Trek and Star Trek Into Darkness. In fact, the last scene of this game is leading into the first scene of the second movie. But yes, Star Trek is a third-person action-adventure Star Trek video game and it was developed by Digital Extremes. And they have done quite a few other games, but this one is the only time they've handled the Star Trek franchise as far as I know. And the game is set in the Star Trek Kelvin universe, as I just mentioned, and you basically follow Captain James T. Kirk and his crew on this adventure which is action-packed but doesn't really span across a wide time. Well, I think it's only a, a couple of days in in-game in time, so to speak, even though you manage to do quite a few things in that allotted time slot. And as always, we are on board of the USS Enterprise and the player has a choice. This was actually a game that was sort of um, described as a bro co-op because it is a game where you can play in co-op as you can see on screen right now you could either pick Spock or Kirk as your character and whichever one of those you did not pick will tag along as your ally and if you are playing it in co-op that ally is someone that uh, probably will be of much more uh, value than the AI in this game. We'll get back to that in a little bit but you will rarely be alone, if ever, actually. So, as you probably noticed on the first screen, we have the actual actors in Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto available to pick, so they do look like they do in the movies, and they had the rights for that. So you have the voice work and the appearances of all the correct characters in this game, and that was probably one of the biggest draws at the time, that it would slot seamlessly into the movie timeline and you would recognize the voices and appearances of all the characters. And I still think this is one of the major draws of this game. Uh, you instantly feel familiar and all of them, well, it's hard to say all of them because I don't think all of them were in the movie, so to speak, but the Enterprise you will recognize and a lot of the characters and their mannerisms and well their little quirks will also be recognizable from the movies so that's a big plus in my book. Aside from that everything is new even though this is uh, an adventure slotted in between the movies there are no references in the movies to this game. Okay so what can we say about the story in this game then? Well, as I mentioned, this is part of the Kelvin Universe timeline and it's slotted in between the movies. A lot of the things that happen in the first movie is briefly mentioned or you can tell that they are connected in this game. The second movie hadn't been released at the time of this game release, so not a lot is mentioned of that. But New Vulcan is the starting point of this game and as you remember New Vulcan was created as a result of the original Vulcan being destroyed in the first Star Trek movie. 
And at the time of the beginning of this game, we know that something has happened on Jim Falcon and they acquire our assistance and we need to go there. And we only know that this is apparently something very important to the Vulcan race. So that's the starting point. And the entire adventure is, as I mentioned earlier, quite brief. And it has to do with the invasion of an alien species called the Gorn that do look like big lizards, but they are almost comically evil. And they share a lot of the same character traits as the Borg that they assimilate. Um, anything and everyone they run into and well they're basically um, experimenting on other life forms and adding their DNA to their own so yes the likenesses to the Borg very apparent all right so let's talk a little bit about the gameplay of this game as I mentioned this was described as a bro co-op by some people it is an action game, and that in itself might very well have set off a lot of people's negative feelings. Because Star Trek in general, at least at the time, was not viewed as a sort of action-packed franchise. Even though the newer movies do flirt with the action genre quite a bit more than the older ones, this game is a pure action game. It's what I would say a classic, nowadays at least, cover-based shooter, and it has inspiration from games such as Gears of War, probably mainly Gears of War, and it's not that uh, difficult to um, guess why. This was uh, a game from the earlier part of the 2000s, and Gears of War was huge at the time and sold quite well. So yes, they definitely took inspiration from that, and that also made it easier to build in the co-op experience. So, as I mentioned earlier, if you are not playing with a friend, then Spock or Kirk will accompany you most of the time. This is one of the rare occasions where I think you had to split up and do things in order to progress the story. But most of the time, you will be together. And that is supposed to, I think, make this uh, a bit more... I don't know... Uh, bantering heavy? because the, the characters can talk and interact with each other. And when it works, it's actually pretty good. So graphics then, uh, as you can see, the graphics are somewhere today in the mid-range. It's not bad, it didn't bother me at any point. At the time, they probably looked pretty okay. But I think the major positive draws is that everything looks, in my view at least, to uh, well, this could be a part of the Kelvin universe. Uh, the game sells that quite well. People act the way they probably should have, and things look the way they should have. And all of those are positives. On the negative side, though, yeah, if you don't like what they picked as a genre, this game probably won't give you anything, even though it looks the part, because what I'm doing right now is what you will be doing for most of the game. Running around, doing objectives, and further on in the game, shooting at 90% of what you run into. So, for most of the game, you will be indoors, fighting through corridors. Well, or disguised corridors. But there are some cool parts of the game where you are outside. This is one of them. And further on in the game, you actually get to fly around in your little suits. The controls are not the best in those parts, but in general, the controls work just fine. But um, yeah, I think the space parts, either where you are going around in suits or as the Enterprise, work pretty well and they break up the flow of the game nicely and keep things interesting. The game in itself, game length-wise, is around seven or eight hours, depending on how hard you push the main story i usually explore as much as possible and this game was no exception to that so i try to um well snoop around as much as possible also a thing worth mentioning is that you have quite a lot of options to uh, upgrade your characters i don't think it was super important to do that but you earn experience by doing a lot of things in this game. And for those experience points, you can buy upgrades for 
your allies, your weapons, your abilities, and so on. And you can do that for both of the characters, even if you are playing this game solo. So what about the environments then? Well, as I mentioned, this game, even though uh, a lot happens, runs through the course of a couple of days, if I didn't misunderstood it completely. But in that time, you do go around to quite a few places. I think there was like eight or nine chapters. And yes, in this particular one, we are at the alien Gorn planet, or one of their planets. They have assimilated quite a few. And here we can actually see the Gorn or a Gorn. There are quite a few variants of them, but they are all big, scaly lizards that have, well, different traits. Some are very melee focused, some are sniper focused, some are camouflage focused, so on and so on. And yeah, this is a good example of um, one of the environments where you are outside. It's a rocky, mountainous region, and you have to infiltrate a base basically. One thing worth mentioning also is that they have this, as you can see right now, the scanning opportunity. And it's one of those hit and miss things, I think, in this game, because you need to uh, scan a lot and often, and it gives you distinct advantages. So as in many games that have a feature like this, you kind of want to scan more than you don't, uh, which makes the graphics look a little bit, you know, you lose a lot of the graphical experience when you are in a blue grid all the time. But yes, it's a nifty um, trait for the game and it works pretty well. Aside from the action parts, there are quite a few puzzles and mini games. This is one of them where you need to decipher things and you are also required. Most of the time you, you can do this on your own, but sometimes you need to manage two things at the same time. If you played in co-op, you would probably have one of them each. And it's uh, mostly interesting enough to add to the game. Here you can also see one of the boss encounters. And as I mentioned, always a lizard. This time it was a big one. And for the most part, I played through on normal. The game wasn't hard or even close to hard. And many of the bosses, you could simply just, uh, well, I didn't do very well there, but yeah, check your grenade and they go flying. So I would probably recommend playing this on something harder than normal if you want a challenge. I had a good time going through the game on normal, but I was never really challenged, to be honest. And yeah, what could I uh, say about some sort of end score for this game? I think it has a lot to do with how much of a Trekkie you are. I have always liked the Star Trek franchise, even though I wouldn't call myself a Trekkie, but it was fun to have another story with these characters and one that fitted into the official timeline. So you got a little bonus from having seen the movies and that you knew what had previously happened. I did like the gameplay loop. The action was pretty fun. The weapons were pretty varied, the environments were also pretty varied and detailed, and I liked the exploring aspect. The game at the time was panned quite a bit for being janky and having a lot of bugs. To be fair, I did not run into a lot of bugs during this gameplay. So I would imagine that they patched a lot of that out after release because, yeah, I think I only had to reload a checkpoint once in this entire game because of me getting stuck in a wall or something like that. And if one reload is what it takes to go through the game, a lot of games are much worse than that these days. So I can't fault it for that. One thing I can say though, is that the AI in this game, both of the enemies and for Spock or Kirk, depending on who you're playing as, is terrible absolutely terrible. You will be playing this game 99% on your own if you are playing alongside the AI. I played as Kirk and I most of the time never saw Spock at all. He was off doing his own thing and you can call on the AI using the controls and not seldom he would reply, I can't do that, Captain. So not only was he not where he was supposed to be, 
wasn't very interested in joining the adventure either. And at times, that can be frustrating. Also, a frustrating thing is that you will, at times, need to rescue the AI. I think I never got a game over screen because of the AI dying, but they can get down and they will sit there until you go and revive them. And if they are down, you cannot go down because if you are both down, you will get the game over screen. So even if you don't get it by not helping out, you will basically uh, take away 50% of the chance of you making it through an area because you don't have the fallback uh, assistance of the AI anymore. Enemy AI, though, is um, almost comically bad at times. Um, even though I still think they made an adequate job because there are usually quite a lot of enemies on screen. But yeah, as you can see, most of the time they just walk around and then you start shooting at, at times they will react and go into cover and start shooting back. At other times they will just hang around which is weird and yeah a lot of the jankiness that i ran into this game was that people would move weirdly or i would find a, a gun that was floating in air or in cutscenes uh, <laughs> a person would wander into view and you know make the the logics of the cutscene weird a lot a lot of small jankiness in this game and and for the most part, it didn't disrupt the gameplay, but it did bring some added humor, and I'm not sure that was the original intent at all. So as an endpoint, I think I should talk a little bit about the boss encounter in this game, because a cover-based shooter needs some good set pieces for boss fights, and it had a big bad in the game, I will not spoil it more than that. And uh, yeah, at the end, you do run into it, and you have a big boss arena with a lot of explosions, a lot of action, and a lot of managing resources. Uh, this battle was fun. The big bad was middling. Uh, it wasn't bad in uh, characterization, but he didn't add anything. And it was, uh, it did the job, but I think they could have developed it quite a bit more. But the gameplay during boss fights were on the most part fun and varied enough. Here you can also see how it looks when Spock goes down. You have a little mini game and then he's back up and running. So yeah, I think the, the set pieces were adequate for this game and they added more than they took away. So as an end result for this game, my review in 2024 would be, um, if you are not a fan of the newer movies, the characters and uh, action-oriented games, you probably won't have the best of times in this game. Maybe a 2 out of 5. For me, it was a solid 3. I had fun, I liked the characters, I liked the story, and I liked the gameplay. And the jankiness and small bugs and stupid AI, sure, that was a minus, but not big enough for me not finishing the game, and I don't regret going through it at all. So yeah, my review lands on a 3 out of five in 2024 and that in my view is time well spent thank you all for following along in my review i hope you had as good of a time as i had i also hope that you will give this game a shot at some point if you liked what you saw if you did why not hit those like and subscribe buttons and i would also like it if i saw you again in future videos but it's now time to say bye bye